back to my video series on topics to do with pregnancy and perinatal mental health. My name is Dr. Erin Bell and I'm a clinical and perinatal psychologist and I teach hypnobirthing. Today we're up to the letter O. So I want to talk to you about oxytocin. It's one of your body's natural calming, pain relieving, amazing endorphins that is so important during birth and labour. And no matter what kind of birth you have, so whether you're going for a more physiological, sometimes what people call natural labour um, without drugs or whether you're planning caesarean or you have an emergency caesarean or you're being induced or anything like that, it's a good idea to have a good backup store of natural oxytocin anyway because no matter what journey your birth takes, having a good store of oxytocin there to start with will make things smoother, calmer, less stressful and potentially a lot less painful. So that's worth thinking about because Oxytocin is actually 20 to 40 times stronger than morphine. So if you've got a resource of something in your body that you can already use, why not use it? So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to build up those reserves because we know particularly for women who do end up having some sort of intervention, there's a gap in that oxytocin. And we know that because... Um, you know, things that happen, like sometimes when you have a caesarean, it makes it a little bit more difficult to breastfeed. Or sometimes when you're induced, um, if you have hemorrhage or if you have lots of um, synthetic drugs as part of that, it can just make things like having your breast milk come in a bit slower. And people do talk about the pain and they do talk about the discomfort. So we know that there tends to be, for a lot of women, a gap. And not necessarily just because they've had intervention. It might be because of things to do with fear, lack of planning for your labour day and getting yourself into a bit of a spin where you get quite stressed and naturally that turns on the adrenaline and turns down the oxytocin. So it's really just about looking to fill those gaps to make birth a more pleasant experience for you. So for example, things like getting exercise before your labour day, getting just the natural endorphins of your body flowing anything that's sort of building up those natural pain reserves. So things like your yeah, exercise, touch if you feel like it. A good way to build up oxytocin in your body is just through massage. And whether that's you do that yourself by using breast stimulation or maybe like starting to just use a breast pump towards the end of your pregnancy if it's safe for you to do so and you want to, just because it gets oxytocin flowing. Having, you know, romantic nights in with your partner if you can still stand them at that stage. All those intimate things that potentially got you pregnant in the first place are good things to try later on too because that natural flow of endorphins keeps you relaxed, keeps you calm and they're all the natural endorphins that are released during birth anyway. Because what happens if you have, uh, say, synthetic drugs, the bigger dose that you have, the less oxytocin that is actually going to be registered and produced in your body. So even though syntocin and um, that's the synthetic drug that mimics oxytocin, what happens is, is that it, it mimics the contractions but they're stronger and that's you don't get any of the feel good effects if that makes sense. So you'll get the contraction but you won't get any of the calm, um, soothing, chilled out feelings. So that's sort of what we're trying to replace and have um, in reserve for just depending on what happens on the day or the evening of your birth. The other thing you might want to try is just having some chocolate. Um, there is some research that shows, you know, there are patterns in the brain that show pleasure centers when people have some chocolate. So things that you would normally do as a treat or to plan a romantic night out are things that are good for labor as well. Because um, as I say, even if you're planning to go with no assistance whatsoever, no intervention, having that store already there makes things just that bit easier. And we also know, for example, that the first hour after birth is when oxytocin tends to peak. So there is a lot of research that's been done about skin to skin and the importance of skin to skin. So things like making sure you and your baby are connecting as closely as possible, as soon as possible in terms of that physical connection. Again, that skin to skin, giving your baby a good sniff, which might sound funny, but smell is a very, very, very powerful way of getting oxytocin flowing. And the other thing, of course, is if possible, if at all possible, letting your baby just crawl up on your chest by themselves, so not enforcing or rushing quick we've got to breastfeed and get things happening, but just giving your baby a bit of chill out time to just 
be on your chest. Oxytocin helps them keep warm. Um, it, you know, the smell helps them figure out like who you are and are they safe and all of that. But also what the latest research is showing is that the breast crawl that babies do or even just kind of massaging the general area is actually the thing that produces the most oxytocin for mum. It's not necessarily that first latch. We've possibly put a little bit too much attention on that first actual feed thinking that baby to breast contact is what makes the big oxytocin surge but the latest research is actually telling us it's more the massage, it's more the crawling up. So having that uninterrupted time if possible makes mum's oxytocin just sore. So these are things to think about in terms of just giving you the optimal birth that you want. Free of distraction, free of stress, those kinds of things. All right, if you want anything more to do with pregnancy, perinatal, mental health, or if you're a birth worker, maybe you're a doula or a midwife or someone who's wanting some more mentoring, some more training, some more information, I can help with that. You can find me at drerin.com.au and I always put my links to social media and things like that below. All right, I will talk to you next time. Bye.